Hey guys, it's J5 the Bravo here, back with Anime Chat with J5. We're going to review Ghost in the Shell in a cyberpunk, very thriller sci fi anime movie. Released in 1995 under the Japanese name Kokaku Kidotai. This was directed by Mamoru Ushi, who is the director of the series as well. It's written by Kuzunori Ito and Masamune Shiro, who is the anime manga writer and creator himself. The plot of Ghost in the Shell. Those of you wondering, yes, this actually helped in, you know, envision the Matrix. The Wachowski brothers took influence from this anime to create the Matrix. So, the cast stars Akio Otsuka as Batio, Batio Atsuko Tanaka, Tanaka as Major Motoko Kusanagi, Iyamasa Kayumi as Puppet Master, Kuchi Yamadara as Togusa, and Tamioki as Chief Aramaki. Aramaki. The plot of Ghost in the Shell. Set in the year 2032, apparently, Momotoko Kusanagi and Butio, a group out of the anti-terrorist group Public Security Section 19, actually 9, are sent off to stop rogue androids. To stop a mysterious hacker who is helping support an androids named the Puppet Master, who has some mysterious past with Motoko and Butio. His plot is to link all of the networks in the cyber world to create one unity. So he becomes the all rainy god. Now up to the investigation gets hotter and hotter. Motoko and Matio have to team up as partners to continue and stop and start the case. Eventually figure out what's going on and eventually put the puppet master to justice. What's next? What's next? This was a very good movie. I know this has an OVA and other animes that are part of it. So I, I've only seen the movie. I've never seen the you know Innocence. I never saw the sequel. I didn't even read the manga, which I heard was really good. And the art style is beautifully done. Mm. And delicious grape and raspberry. It's very beautifully done by Mororo Shiro's art style. Giving it very complex, very human-like design. And a very good neo-dystopian future of this dark world. You really get hooked in by the atmosphere itself. It's very gritty. It's very dark. Very cyber tech savvy. You know, you see people using, like, Wi-Fi, you know, computer networks, androids. It gives you that cyberpunk future, I mean cyber tech future, and when all this is going on, you have you know cops part of the public security going after androids, going after criminals, hackers, you know all those tech criminals trying to boost the system, you know everything's going bad for the city. The writing was very good, the dialogue was very good, the actors, the the Japanese dub actors were very good, especially the actors like Atsuko Tanaka, Tanaka and Imasu Kayumi. Even Atsuko Tanaka. She's also the voice of Poison in the Ultra Street Fighter 4. Conan, Conan from Naruto Shippuden. And the Japanese word for Bayonetta in Bayonetta Bloody Fate. The action is very good. It's very high octane. Like I said, Matrixy. Some bits of... I guess there's no slow-mo because then again, remember, Matrix came out after this. Including the Animatrix. Uh, the characters are very likable. I like Motoko Kusanagi. She's a female cop. And she has human emotion. She's logical, she's beautiful, she's powerful, and she takes law, well, to her hands. I mean, she's an officer. What do you expect for this femme fatale robot? She's able to calculate, she's able to catch the bad guys, and let's just say it, this blows her shit up. Yes. A lot of explosions, action. Think of all the most epic action movies ever in the world and put them in an anime. It's very complex. The story is... It can be hard to follow, but if you know the manga, and it helps to read the manga for me, I was able to follow it by the pacing. This is very good pacing. It doesn't speed up at times or slow up at times. It has a very good, steady rhythm to it. So when you miss something, you can always go back and say, wait, they mentioned about that. The villain, Puppet Master, uh, he's just kind of your generic hacker to me. I mean, yeah, he was diabolical, but I've seen the hacker villain before, used in movies before. It's, they only want, like, global power so they can, you know, control the main grid of the world's, like, nuclear weapons. Because he has that kind of doomsday kind of feel with, you know, I mean, you understand it's technology in the future. They would have hacked stuff. I mean, there's holograms, you know, robots being used by humans, robots used for justice. Think of iRobot and Blade Runner put together. And I think this is what you get for a movie. If you can imagine those two movies together in an anime, then I hope it's this together. It's very beautifully done. The acting is very great. Art direction is good. The plot is very interesting and it gets you motivated. The action is nonstop, no holds bar, intense. And 
I think the dubbing, the Japanese dubbing, was superb. The characters were likable. You got into this high octane, very superficial dystopian future to kick some androids hiker ass. Hacker, I meant not a hiker. Why are they hiking in the future? So what do I give Ghost in the Shell? Well, I give it a 5 out of 5 J5 stars. I love this film. If you're a fan of anime, check it out. If you love The Matrix, check it out. If you love robo sci-fi or cyber sci-fi, then I think you enjoyed this film. Like this video. Subscribe to my channel. This is J5 signing off. Have a great kawaii day. Wow, I can't believe I said that. But see you later. Bye-bye.